and welcome to National Focus. I am Julian Morris. In the headlines, Prime Minister Skerritt urges global action on climate change at BOA Forum. Work progresses smoothly on construction of Dominica Grammar School and four athletes to represent Dominica at the 2024 Carifta Games. The details of the headline stories and more when we return. Ride safe, wear a helmet, safer roads in the nature aisle. This message was brought to you by the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Welcome back. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt urged world leaders to come together in the face of the significant challenges present in today's world he emphasized the importance of collaborating to address these challenges and create a prosperous future. This call for unity and cooperation was made during his address at the opening plenary of the BOA Forum for Asia Annual Conference 2024. We need to work together to pull our strengths and move faster towards achieving peace and sustainable development. We need to strengthen cooperation and solidarity between countries in order to provide effective responses to the financial, economic, and social crises faced by many countries around the world. It is clear that sustainable development continues to be a pending issue for the international community. Given the high levels of inequality, poverty, and marginalization among countries, Gross inequalities between developed and developing countries persist and are widening. The unjust international economic order persists and is strengthened, and the devastating burden of which continues to be borne by the poorest countries. The effects of climate change continue to threaten the existence of low-lying small island developing states like Dominica. Today we have the opportunity to move towards a change of era. We have an option of continuing with the same patterns of production, energy, and consumption that are no longer viable and cause terrible damage to the environment, or assuming a new path that ponders sustainable and inclusive development and with a long-term vision. For these reasons, we share the idea that development will not be sustainable unless it is inclusive of a resilience agenda. The convergence of interests, purposes, and actions among peoples, individuals, states, and the international organizations is essential in order to achieve collective goals. Prime Minister Skerritt acknowledges the Boer Forum for Asia and the People's Republic of China for offering development alternatives to other countries through mutual respect and mutually beneficial cooperation. The global initiatives promoted by the People's Republic of China have created the necessary conditions to stimulate economic growth without harming the environment. They have been beneficial in actively assisting developing countries in their process of industrialization and access to digital technologies. Since President Xi Jinping proposed the Belt and Road Initiative 10 years ago, states have expressed their support and appreciation for the, this initiative through bilateral and multilateral mechanisms. The most tangible results of these have been seen in the areas of poverty reduction, food security, health 
cooperation, financing for development, climate change and green development, digital economy and connectivity in the digital age. China has created a development miracle that has astonished the world. And at the same time, China has made great contributions to the cause of global development. The Chinese government has significantly contributed to global development. In alignment with their short, medium and long-term development goals and strategies, China has persistently supported the hosting of the Boer Forum to create a cooperative platform with other countries in the pursuit of a high-quality economic development and a prosperous future for all. Dear friends, like China, the Commonwealth of Dominica, Dominica's development initiatives are people-centered. To this end, we are committed to being the world's first climate-resilient nation and have made great efforts to achieve this goal. We have implemented the National Strategy for Resilience Development, Dominica's Climate Resilience and Recovery Plan 2020-2030, and the Disaster Risk Financing Strategy, which together have defined a roadmap for implementing the Sustainable Development Goals. Dominica also welcomes the exchange of experiences and international cooperation in science, technology, and innovation, as well as access to them. We will continue to advocate the maintenance of multilateralism and partnership for solidarity as ways to find global solutions to common challenges. The Boer Forum for Asia Annual Conference 2024 is a four-day event from March 26 to 29, themed Asia and the World, Common Challenges, Shared Responsibilities. Work is progressing smoothly on the construction of the state-of-the-art Dominica Grammar School. More in this report. Work is progressing smoothly on the construction of the state-of-the-art Dominica Grammar School. The project, which began in May 2021, is being developed by Montreal Management Consultant Establishment Limited, MMCE. MMCE designed the construction activities to take into consideration the existing buildings. The two major buildings will be retained but will undergo full renovation works, both externally and internally. The renovation works will modernize both structures to match the aesthetics of the new buildings. A third major building will be built similar to the two existing buildings for classes and lectures. Other areas for the campus will include a library, an administrative building, a greenhouse, green areas and a modern auditorium that can host up to 500 people. Almost uh, done with the uh, auditorium here, only for the uh, steel roof. And the steel roof is waiting for some balls to be manufactured, especially for the weight of the roof, of the steel roof that is coming. It has, uh, we have about uh, 178 balls that are under manufacturing. Now that's what's delaying us. Uh, even though the roof is ready for uh, casting. That's as far as the uh, auditorium. And let me give you uh, another uh, refreshing, ref you know, to refresh you about the auditorium, we're talking about 600 seats auditorium here, uh, building in addition to all the uh, uh, other facilities for administration, management of the, uh, of the uh, auditorium. Work is also ongoing on Block C, which will host classrooms and the administrative office. As for uh, Block C behind me, we're going to have the last casting within two weeks. And uh, we're done with uh, that. Will, uh, will be the end of the, uh, let's say, superstructure. Uh, the uh, work on finishing is going on uh, at the ground floor and second floor. Uh, as for the admin building, which is right behind me, uh, the su sub and superstructure uh, uh, are completed and now we are uh, working on the finishing inside. When completed, there will be approximately 26 new classrooms at the school. We have about uh, 13 classrooms at the uh, 14 classrooms at the uh, uh, block C, 
uh, and we have, which is more than what block A and B, the original, uh, yet it, they're the same size, but we don't have some uh, mechanical functions and, and, and labs that are uh, taking, uh, you know, area of the classrooms in block A and B. So for block C, we have 14 classrooms, and for the admin building, we have about 13 classrooms, or potential of 13 classrooms, but uh, it depends on the uh, school management, you know, how they would like to utilize the space, yes. Okay, um, so all in total, we have about 26 classrooms. The school will also have sporting facilities for football and basketball. The construction of the state-of-the-art facility is evidence of government's continued investment in the education of the country's youth. Kuvia John for the Government Information Service. Thank you, Kuvia, for that report. The Ministry of Culture, Youth, Sports and Community Development, in collaboration with the Sports Division and the Dominica Amateur Athletics Association, have presented Dominica's delegation for the 51st edition of the Carifta Games. Sports coordinator Mr. Trevor Schillingford announced the four athletes who will participate at the Games which will take place at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium in St. George's, Grenada from March 30 to April 1, 2024. This year, Dominica is represented by four athletes, Corel Etienne, Addison James, Jamaica Tit, and Neon Davis. These athletes went through a qualification process to get to the games, and they must be complimented for their efforts. I urge you athletes to give your best representation at the games. You have a rich tradition of medalists at the character games to follow, and we look to more medal winning performances at the 2024 games. A send-off ceremony was held in honor of the delegation on March 27 at the Dominica Olympic Committee Conference Room. The event featured speeches from prominent figures, including the Minister of Sports, Honorable Oscar George, who recognized the diligence of the athletes and offered them words of encouragement. I also want to say congratulations to our athletes on behalf of the Ministry of Sports and, of course, the Government of Dominica by extension. You all have qualified to represent your country this year. I want you to always remember that playing for your country at any level is a big deal. It's a great honor and a privilege to represent Dominica. Of course, this is testament of your hard work and dedication to your specific discipline, which meant you were rewarded with an opportunity to put your country on the map over in Grenada. Let's give our athletes a huge round of applause. <laughs> However, I urge our athletes to take this opportunity very seriously. You must carry yourself in a particular way. There will be people looking up to you, as indicated by our previous speakers, including athletes in Dominica. And these athletes did not get the opportunity that you are getting. And of course, they will be looking up to you. Some might even be jealous um, that you were selected over them. But at the end of the day, you have to represent everybody in the country. At the same time, unfortunately, there will be people who will criticize you and try to bring you down, especially when you don't perform or when you don't meet the expectations. You have to be able to take both extremes with humility and always remain positive in your mindset. 2023 Carifta gold medalist in the under-17 javelin, Addison James from Marigot, will compete in the under-20 javelin event this year. He spoke about his expectations going into the Games. My upcoming performance, I expect it to be great because I, my goal is to go and regain my title, as I said, and I want to fulfill my wish, so I am very, I am very much looking forward to it. Preparation has been very hard because I have to balance school and training, so it has been very hard getting home at late hours and still trying to study as much. At Carafter Games, I'd like to regain my title, but most likely qualify for the world juniors which is held in August, so that's one of my main goals in the character games. 13-year-old Nian Davis from Atkinson will make his debut at the 2024 Carifta Games competing in the under-17 javelin event. I will be competing in the javelin under-17 boys in Grenada. Um, I expect to do my best, I want to try and to do my best and 
get 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 my best for victorious in the end. It's a bit nervous because it's my it's my first time, not for uh, not represent Dominica, but my first time being at this um at this category and first time going to see for athletics. It has different um, size people older than me and much in more size than me, but I don't like that. Um, discourage me and do my best out there. The two other athletes who will represent Dominica include 15-year-old Jamaica Tit in the discus and the short put under 17 events and 14-year-old Karelli Tien in the 100 and 200 meters under 17 events. Dominican athlete Karelli Tien has been committed to athletics training in Jamaica at the Edwin Allen High School. I want to take the opportunity to specifically thank the parents of Karel Etienne for trusting me to have your ward, your daughter, to go to Jamaica last year. Karel left Dominica, for those who don't know, left Dominica at 14 years. It is a nightmare for most parents to have your child traveling on her own, own residing in a dorm with persons that she do not know to represent her country. So with that, I would like to ask for a round of applause. And with that, we have realized in a short space of time the massive improvements that Curl has been able to make, being around the second fastest track athlete in the Caribbean. Carell has already qualified for the 2024 World Athletics Under-20 Championship in August. The other members of Dominica's delegation include General Secretary Mr. Philip White as Congress Delegate and Team Manager Natasha Gervier Carbon, Female Chaperone, Mr. Jewel Hamilton, Team Coach, Mr. Walson Paquet, Silver Referee, will officiate at the Carifta Games, Carlisle John Baptist, Journalist, Trevor Schillingford, representative of the Ministry of Sports, Mr. Brendan Williams, who is president of the DAAA, NACAC representative, Congress delegate for the Carifta team. Dominica Athletics Association has taken steps to fully equip Dominican athletes for tournaments. Japanese sportswear company ASICS became the official sponsor of Dominica's national athletics uniforms. A presentation of athletic skits was made to the delegation at the send off ceremony. The uniform will make its debut at the 2024 Carifta Games. After several months of ne negotiation, which commenced at the World Championships, Outdoor Championships in Budapest, the Dominica Athletics Association was able to secure sponsorship with global sports brand um, company ASICS, which is um, a company out of, of Japan. Um, they sponsor the world champion, Mr. Fred Curley, and in their efforts to penetrate the Caribbean market, they felt that they should target a country such as Dominica, which has up-and-coming athletes. The Dominica Olympic Committee and Government of Dominica presented checks to the Dominica Amateur Athletics Association in support of Dominica's participation at the 2024 Carifta Games. Discover Dominica Authority also provided t-shirts for travel. Meanwhile, General Secretary of the Dominica Olympic Committee, Honorable Finella Wenham Shepherd, encouraged parents to invest in sports as well as athletes' education. A lot of times we tend to see sports as a distraction when in fact people like me will tell you that it is something that would shape discipline in a, in a, in a child, in a young person, you learn your time management skills, you are more in tune with your body and, and its welfare. And oftentimes parents, as I said, like to say, go and study a book and not take on probably the short put or some other implement to improve your sport. So parents, thank you again for supporting the athletes. And as we make plans for their college and universities, we also need to make plans for their sport careers. It is indeed a career. We see that through Tia, who said to us at the Olympic Committee, if I'm a full-time athlete, you will not regret. And we did take that decision, invested, and received the returns of that. And at the Dominic Olympic Committee, we are more than willing to do those things with our athletes. As I leave, I want to say, Best chance to all of you. Congratulations again. And go 
Team Dominica. The Garifta Games were founded by the Caribbean Free Trade Association and was first held in 1972 to showcase the raw talent, skill and determination of young athletes in the Caribbean region. As the delegation embarks on their journey on March 28, the Government of Information Service also wishes con to congratulate and wish the delegation the best of luck at the 2024 Garifta Games. You are watching National Focus. More when we return. Welcome back. It will be the Battle of the Academies when the St. Mary's Academy and Orion Academy meet for the finals of the Inter-Secondary Schools Debating Competition on April 17. Ms. Trudy Christian of the Dominica State College is organizing the event. The Intersecondary Schools Debating Competition is a revamped competition. It is my initiative that came up because the Kiwanis Secondary Schools Debate, which was an ongoing debate for years, had essentially stopped somewhere around 2017. And last year, 2023, I decided let's get debating back into the high schools. So we began the inter-secondary schools debating competition last year. It was very successful. And this year we were back for the second um, year, the second installment. The debating competition is geared at engaging secondary school students in debating and public speaking. So an invitation is sent out to all the high schools asking for them to submit a team of good speakers to take part in this competition. We began this year in January with the first round and we had a total of 10 high schools participating in this round. And we, of course, narrowed down the field. The second round, the winners of the first round would take part in that. In the semi-finals, which just happened, the winners of the second round took part in this. And now we are approaching the finals where we have only two schools left standing in this competition. And that is the St. Mary's Academy and the Orion Academy. Ms. Christian, a debating coach herself, says it requires some preparation if one is to excel at it. Debating is pretty much having a particular side of a topic or a particular position on a topic and having to find the necessary background information to support that stance. Now, it might not necessarily be the stance that you believe, but as a debater, you need to find the evidence to make your side of the argument solid. So it takes quite a bit of research. The students are encouraged to do different forms of research, whether it be interviewing people in the, in the area of the topic, um, looking through credible internet sources, news sources, and also, you know, doing surveys. That's another aspect of research that the students can do, getting the opinion of other people on the particular topic that they, they are faced with. Debating coaches play an integral role in preparing the debating teams. The coaches have a big role to play in debating. The students, of course, they are young, they are getting introduced to the world of public speaking and debating but at each high school there is a coach or sometimes two um, coaches really pushing the students and showing them how to best navigate preparing for the topic. Uh, at the finals the two coaches from the St. Mary's Academy is Ms. Sharon Philogen from the Orion Academy Mrs. Abigail Woodman. These two coaches I know are also competing against each other, just like the students are competing against each other for the debate. The proposed topic for the debating finals is the tourism industry currently is the most valuable tool for economic growth and diversification in Dominica. It sounds like a big topic, but really it's something that people have been discussing throughout. Is tourism really the next best bet for our economic growth here in Dominica? So the young people on April 17th, that's the St. Mary's Academy and the Orion Academy, they will be taking on each other on this very pertinent topic as to is tourism it for economic growth. Quite apart from the personal fulfillment and skill set development that students derive from the bidding, there are significant prizes to be won. So, of course, for the intersecondary schools debating competition, we have garnered a lot of support um, from the private sector, um, from 
individuals as well and we have been able to get quite a bit of sponsorship and therefore offer the students prizes at each level of the competition. The grand prize that the students will receive the winning school is a trip for four to St. Lucia, all expenses paid, and they will get other small prizes as well. But nobody is left uh, empty-handed at the inter-secondary schools debating competition at each level. There are trophies that we give, there are awards that we give, and um, at the finals as well, the runners-up will get uh, rewarded as well. So, you know, I really just want to say thank you to the general public who has supported supported this endeavor and our sponsors who have really stepped up uh, stepped up to to make this possible uh, one of my big sponsors Josephine Gabriel and Company Limited really you know putting their best foot forward in this endeavor Lindo Matt as well and um, Fine Foods Inc. The debate venue will be the Truth and Grace Fellowship Global in Roseau. President of Dominica, Her Excellency Sylvani Burton, along with the members of Cabinet, joined the family and friends of Mr. Peter Paddington Leblanc as he celebrated his 100th birthday. Curvia John reports. Mr. Peter Paddington Leblanc, on March 27, 1924, celebrated his milestone with a large gathering at Cabrits as he joined Dominica's most cherished group of citizens, becoming Dominica's 15th living centenarian. Mr. Libla is happy to have seen 100 years of life. He credits his long life to eating healthy throughout. Long provision. Long provision since I'm a little boy. I grew up in that. And I like to talk to now. Long provision. The feed, the dashing, the yam, the plantain. You see, all my food is one pot. Then just make a pot, everything put it in one pot. And is that I do it all the time, all the time, all my years. I stopped eating meat since 1960. I used to eat meat, I used to drink, I used to gamble. I put all that aside. Mr. Lee Bly is a talented harmonica player and gave his family and friends a small performance on his big day. As part of the celebrations, Her Excellency Burton presented Mr. Libla with a plaque to commemorate the occasion. On behalf of the government and people of the Commonwealth of Dominica, and on behalf of Mr. Burton, my husband, and myself, I wish to extend to you my congratulations and good wishes on the occasion of celebrating your 100th birthday today, Wednesday the 27th of March. 2024. May the good Lord continue to bless you. And this message has been engraved into this presentation for you today. It has been placed in this so you are able to have it and um, to hang it up in your, in, at your home as the message from the President of Dominica on your 100th birthday. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Social Services, Mrs. Margaret Rudet Baptist, says it is a blessing to be able to live for a century. Every breath we draw is a gift of God's love. Every moment of existence is a grace. Words of wisdom uttered by Mr. Thomas Merton, an American monk, writer, poet and social activist. Every year a birthday is celebrated. It should be done in reverence of the gift it is from God, and not in despair about growing older. And so today, we celebrate the grace and favor of God as we mark 100 birthdays with our dear Mr. LeBlanc. Nobody can claim that living to be 100 is an easy task. I am sure Mr. LeBlanc can attest to just how difficult life can be sometimes. It wasn't easy, right, Mr. LeBlanc? We cannot overlook the daily struggles, the hurdles, and the heartbreak that comes with our mere existence. You watch friends and family pass on, and you grieve for them. But all of that is overshadowed by the pure joy 
that comes with living a fulfilling life. The joy of having children and grandchildren running around the house and the pride of witnessing the successes of your loved ones, knowing you had some part to play, no matter how small, in making it possible. She says Mr. Libla is an example of living a fulfilled life. So often we hear people say they would rather not live to be 100 because all they think is if life is tough, no, why would I want to have 100 years of difficulty? But we are taught anything by the life that Mr. Libla and so many of our beloved centenarians have lived. It is that life is worth living and worth living well. Today's celebration is a joyful occasion, and I join your family and friends in Portsmouth and surrounding communities in celebrating this day with you. As the ministry with responsibility for senior security, not only is it our duty, but it is our joy to be here with you and to celebrate with you. The government of Dominica understands the importance of caring for its senior citizens, one of the country's most vulnerable groups, and has put in place various initiatives to ensure that they live their lives in comfort and security. Government as well understands the critical importance of all social safety net programs and social protection mechanisms for our most vulnerable population, including the elderly, and has given its full commitment to embrace efforts to facilitate the sustainability and reliability of these programs. In fact, the government through the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Social Services has developed a centenarian program specifically for centenarians to assist with the cost of basic necessities and to ensure that our centenarians continue to live a comfortable and healthy life. With, with effect from this coming month, you will benefit from this intervention. Presently, the government continues to ensure that an annual subvention is provided to several organizations which provide institutional care to the elderly, persons with special needs, and persons with disabilities. Moreover, the government has undertaken several initiatives to recognize the elderly in our nation, including the designation of the month of September as the month of the elderly. Parliamentary representative for the Portsmouth constituency, Honorable Finella Wenham Shepherd, is elated to have shared in this momentous celebration. My first meeting with Mr. Paddington is I have met a legend. Because when he told me his age, I looked at Mr. Paddington. Mr. Paddington, I wonder if you remember that. And I said, you sure you're that old? And he told me, of course, child. And now, he didn't know me. But they've always said that your past identifies who you are. And... I had to tell him who my father was. And so it is very important that we date back into his 100 years. Kuvia John for the Government Information Service. Thank you, Kuvia, for that report. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominic on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here on the GIS News Production Team, I am Julian Morris. Thanks for watching.